So, today we're going to do just a little quickie, because it's Technique Tuesday at Cat's Playhouse on artdemos.com. And here's what we're going to do today. We're going to make a Stay Wet palette. I have hmm, two, I uh, know, three Stay Wet palettes that I bought and spent a lot of money on. Guess what? They don't work, because the paper, basically the paper is like a wax paper, and because of that, the, the paints just slide all over the place. And then you have to make sure your sponge stays wet, and a lot of times it doesn't. So, today I'm going to show you how to make what, and this is what I've been using up to this point, uh, is a larger one. With, and this is, it has some, has some issues with the larger ones because I've noticed that um, there's so much area up there that some of the paints have started to dry out. Or dry, dry out, dry up, whatever. Uh, but you can see that using the cotton, 100% cotton paper, uh, it keeps the, the paints all in place if they're not coming, you know, they're not moving all over the place. I did find that the neons seem to be drying out quicker than the rest. I don't know. Maybe something about, you see those bright neons there? Well, those are, they're still workable. There's portions of it still workable, but starting to put a skin over it. And this Oh, I've had this now 10 days, I believe. I really need to add water to it. That's one of the things that I found in doing some research on the internet, is that you do have to keep that sponge underneath or whatever you're using underneath uh, wet. So this is what I have been using off and on. I used this when I was doing, uh, I think I was, mm, no, maybe I didn't do this, in, uh, af I didn't do this until after I finished my Bunny and Valentine uh, demo. I think it was after that point in time when the stuff was drying out so fast that I decided I needed to figure out how to make a Stay Wet palette that actually worked. Okay, so, quick, quick, so we don't take a lot of valuable time for anybody. Here's what we need in order to make our Stay Wet tablet. You need a little container. This is one. I had large candle cups and beach shell pins in here, so Lordy knows it's probably, oh, I have no idea how old this is. Uh, it says a flavor saver. It doesn't say who. Um, now it doesn't say who. It's a. Oh, excuse me. Sterilite. Apparently, Sterilite. Apparently, this is the one that I bought a bunch of these, and I think I bought them at Kmart. You, these are. I don't believe they sell these in the dollar store because there's a little bit better quality, which is kind of what you wanted. The one I showed you before was from the dollar store, and it's uh, thin. And I don't know if that's what's causing the paint to not last as long. But anyway, forget about that. We want a container. And then what I use, uh, again, because dollar store availability, is uh, a chamois. And it says it holds more than five times its weight in liquid. Okay, I don't really know that any of this is true. This isn't a commercial for chamois. This is a way to show you how to maintain the, the t integrity of your acrylic paint. So, oh, okay, container. I'm using a chamois, you could use a flat sponge. Then what I am using, but which could be replaced with uh, parchment paper, this is 100%, 100% cotton fiber paper. This is what was recommended in the one um, article that I read about Stay Wet palettes. Don't remember which site it was on, I believe it was the acrylic painting site. But anyway, it doesn't, ma doesn't matter. This is resume paper. It's um, it's a heavier weight. It's 32 pounds. Uh, I just chose that because I happen to have it sitting out there. So you want a piece of paper, or as I said, you could use, if you had it available, some parchment paper. I probably have parchment paper somewhere, but since this is a quickie, I decided to go with what I've, I already know works, so I'm going to be using the cotton paper. So what you need to do is you need to find out the size paper that is going to fit in here comfortably. And I suppose I could measure this if I were so inclined, but because I am who I am, I'm going to take the, the easy way out and just mark it with my nail and say, okay, this is where we're going to cut. All right, so we're going to cut the piece of 100% cotton. This is, as I said, 32 pound. And I'll just cut this piece out. Uh, you can be, listen, if you're going to do this and you want to make a bunch of these, I've seen people have for the different color families, like they'll have one that's for the blues, one's for the whatever. I usually will do this 
uh, how I would do it if I was going to want to have a bunch of these. I only have this one to show you now. What I would probably do is I would, uh, if I was going to do a specific piece, say I was going to do a little girl, and I knew that I was going to use XYZ uh, colors, I would make that for that particular piece and just, uh, you know, put it in this because it would make it, it would make the stuff a lot easier for me anyway to uh, have all the colors together that I was using for that. But instead of pulling out the green and the blue, then you end up with all these things sitting around. And I don't have enough room on this table to begin with. I'm moving into my new studio. This is probably the last class. Uh, I may not be. I may do one more class, but uh, will be one of the last classes I do in this old studio because my daughter and her husband will, will be... Um, coming to stay for a few months while they wait to get in their new house. So anyway, you're now going to cut your chamois the same size, approximately the same size. And again, I said you could measure this, but do as I say, not as I do. And I'm going to cut a piece of the chamois, which is, I'm sure it's acrylic or poly polyester. Uh, it's a flat piece of uh, what they call chamois. It's a faux chamois, I'm sure, because the chamois that are the good ones, I don't know what their properties are, but I believe it's 100% natural fibers. All right, anyway, forget about that. What we're going to do now is we're going to put down, this is how you do this. You lay down your either a flat sponge, or you can even use um, a bigger sponge, you know, a thicker sponge. I personally prefer it to sit flatter because I don't want to risk the, the paint, you know, going all over the place. Anyway, so you're going to put this down, then you are going to add water, which I have right here. And I'm just going to pour that in there. I'm not going to, uh, well, I might actually because that just soaked right in there. Uh, okay, you know what? We have to get the paper, the paper needs to be wet as well, so let's put that down underneath. And we'll put this over top just for a moment or two because this paper, you need your paper and your chamois or your sponge to be wet when you place these on it. Otherwise, you're going to end up with the paint drying out more quickly than you'd like. And you add, um, depending on, I mean, these things can keep for months from everything that I have read. So you're probably going to want to be sure, check it at least once every four or five days to make sure it's not drying out. And then just add a teaspoon of uh, water. You can, you, what you could do is you could pour it. You can see right now, I don't know if you can actually see, there's a little bit of water in here, which I don't know if I need that much water. So what I'm going to do is just dump it in my water bucket over here. Okay. And you've got your paper now, which is on top of it. And this paper is nice and wet. You can see that. And then when you put your top on it, you've got your Stay Wet palette. And I believe what I shall do, let me see, I'm going to do a piece today, but the piece I'm going to do today, I have to decide um, what colors I'm going to use. So let's just real quick, you can't see this, but believe me, you'll see it as they come in frame. I'm going to get a yellow. And again, as I said, no affiliation. I just happen to prefer the Americanas. Uh, I've used them for years. I know I can depend on them, so I'm going to get a yellow. And let me see what else we want. Um, we're going to get a yellow green. And I have one out here somewhere. Mm, that is a sour apple green. It's also an Americana. And I happen to like the uh, here, sour apple. Here's another one. So these are in the same, these are in the, uh, the, the uh, warm, these are warm, warm colors. So I'll put those along the one side. What I do when I do this now, what I'll do is I will put the colors along the side so that I leave this center. So if I want to, I can mix. Uh, and remember, as you're mixing, this is a piece of paper. So don't get in there and go, ah, you know, you want to be gentle with your mixing. Uh, when you do, what I do is I pull out a little bit of color and I just actually mix it very close to where that is. I'll put some titanium white up here. I'll, you'll see as we go along here how we're doing this. I'm also going to put some uh, glazing liquid out here so if I need to thin down my paints I can do that. So we've got the three the three warm colors. Let's see. I'm trying to think. The, um, 
the piece that I want to do this on, I guess I should just probably pull it out from over here and see, this is a piece that I have been working on off and on. I'm going to finish this up and I have a class, a real quick class that I'm going to be doing before I move out of the studio and it's going to be on how to salvage an old canvas. This was an old canvas that I've, I've started. You can see I've started putting color on there. So let's pull out these. Since we're doing this, let's pull out the colors that we're going to be using in here. I have, oh, I've got to get an, an orange. An orange. This is a neon orange. Man, does that look neon in that? Whew, yeah. Okay, let me see if I have an Americana orange. I don't think so. I don't know if Americana... I believe they make... Um, pretty sure they make neons, but interesting. Whoops, there goes one on the floor. Um, in fact, I better pick that up before the animals start batting it around. I don't see, that's interesting, I don't see any Americana uh, neons. Now, they must make them. I just probably had them already in this Craftsmart or whatever this one thing is in folk art, and I decided not to bother buying another set. But as I said, I prefer the Americanas for the simple fact that it's a really heavy pigmented craft paint. I'm going to keep talking, but you're not going to be able to hear me. i got to get under my table here, so you'll just have to all bear with me as I oh, try to get over here. Okay, I'm back. I'm back as much as I'm going to be back. Folk art. I have folk art. It's an okay paint, too. As I said, my favorite is the uh, Americana. Okay, so what else was I using in that? I have the yellow. I've got the pink. I've got the greens. Um, did I have any? Hmm, I guess I'm going to need a little bit of brown, or not a brown brown, but a kind of sienna. What I might actually use for that, though, if I can find it on here, I have a little turny table, so I'm going to use a bright orange, which is all mixed down into a kind of a brownish color. Anyway, okay, I've got two, four, six colors. So all I want to do, I've got my AGL here, got that as well, and my titanium white. I'm going to try some Reeves titanium white. There was a sale at Michael's, so yippee skippy, I bought that. And uh, let's put those out, and I'm going to start down at this end. Let me move these out of the way so you can see. Oh, I don't know why I have to have so little space. I, end, I start with such a big space, and then for some reason... I end up with a little teeny spaces left. All right, so I just want you to hold this so that you can see what I'm doing. All right, so here down at the end, I'm going to put a blob of titanium white. I've got a cat here in there. That's why they call me cat, ladies. Okay, so anyway, let's get back to what we were doing. I'm going to need, I think, I'm going to spritz this a little bit because I'm looking at this and thinking, paper's looking a little dry. My house is so dry. You cannot, I cannot believe how dry it is. All right, so remember what I was saying about how you want to make sure that you have wet paper. Um, absolutely want wet paper because otherwise your paints will not stay as uh, moist as you want them to. Okay, so there's the paper. Let me see if I can keep this in view so you can show, I can show you what I'm doing. I'm looking for a brownish color, and I'm not sure. I'm still here, but I'm moving off to the side. And it will be nice to get in my new studio because the uh, this stuff is going to be a lot closer to me, so it'll be within reach. Okay, not really the one I was looking for, but it's going to have to, to do because uh, it's a yellow ochre. I, I wanted to find my um, my Golden's yellow ochre, but I I don't know. This is Liquitex. This is fine. This is, you know, this will, will do fine. And uh, yellow oxide, value 5.9. don't know what it means, but to me this is yellow ochre. Doesn't matter what everybody calls it. They can call it what they want. I know what it is. All right. Ooh, here we go. Oh, no, this is the same thing. Obviously, have not used this in a while. So let me give it a little massage. Now, in a case like this, uh, shaking it would probably work. But when I have a tube that's pretty bendable, um, I will give it a little bit of a shake. But I, I have. You, it's easier for me to just 
like massage it a little bit and get it to, to move into place there. All right, let's see how we go here. Maybe I can, well, maybe I can't. I can't find my tissues. Oh well, because I ended up with more of the, the medium than I did of the pigment. All right, so then we're gonna put the ochre over there. All right, so you can see this. And I'm not going to hold it up for very long because stuff, as you can see, is starting to run down the, the thing. So this is what I would do. I've got, it's, it's, going to be, it's going to be wet now for a while. I have my chamois. I have my piece of 100% cotton rag paper. Uh, and then I will, so I've got a little container. And now I'm going to put the lid on this. And this will be what I use in my next class that I teach, uh, which is finishing up a, a disastrous canvas that you're trying to revive and save. So... Stay wet palette. Um, you can use the parchment paper if you don't have the 100% cotton paper. But that's it. So I hope you'll go and you'll try to see if you can make your own stay wet palette without spending a bunch of money. Uh, it's one of my little Technique Tuesdays. I'll catch you on the other side, ladies. Have a good one.